Okay, so when injecting cattle, one of the most important things to consider is the safety of yourself as well as the safety of the cattle uh, themselves. For adequate restraint, you really need to consider the uh, temperament of the cattle themselves, whether you've got friendly dairy cattle like these or rather more ferocious beef cattle will um, determine whether you need to have a very robust crush um, or whether you can uh, use facilities such as these where there's less bars um, and uh, less restraint. You can see there's no restraint of the necks of the um, cows here, whereas with beef cattle, particularly if you're going to um, inject in the neck, that would be essential. Um, so what, I, um, what I'm then going to consider is where to inject uh, the animal. Um, so we have uh, three uh, different locations, um, uh, three different types of, of injection. Um, intravenous injections, um, subcutaneous injections, which means under the skin, um, and intramuscular injections, uh, which means into the muscles themselves. I'll consider intramuscular injections first. There's basically two different locations for um, intramuscular injections um, in cattle, the back end and the neck. Um, so it's usually the back end that you'd use. Um, so uh, you'd use uh, either side of the tail in the rump here um, or behind occasionally you could use also. As a general rule, uh, it's nice to use as thin a needle as possible. However, some products aren't as syringable as others. So the thicker injections, particularly uh, penicillins, uh, are more difficult uh, to syringe, so a thicker needle would be more appropriate. Um, also, the, the volume of uh, medicine administered uh, can make a difference as well. So smaller volumes, you might get away with a thinner needle. Larger volumes, typically a 30 mil dose of, of antibiotics, you're more likely to use, need a thicker needle. Okay. Um, then you've got length of needle, which is significant too. Um, subcutaneous injections, um, generally a shorter needle, um, such as you know anything about half an inch to an inch um, would be sufficient. Um, whereas uh, intramuscular injections, uh, an inch and a half uh, would be a good idea. Generally, the deeper you go into a muscle, um, the better it is. It'll work more quickly. Um, also, where you inject will, will probably be determined by uh, how you restrain the animal in the first place, where it's safe to inject so that you can get out of the way, because you have to consider that the cow can kick to the side and behind as well. Um, and then for injecting uh, in the muscle, you can also inject into the neck. Um, and when you do that, you have to really consider that the head is a very dangerous part of the cow as well, the bull, um, and so adequate head restraint is essential, um, either using a halter or a yoke and a crush. Okay. Subcutaneous injections, um, very commonly it'll say in the data sheets of the medicine um, that you should use, uh, you should inject in the neck, um, which uh, is a good idea as far as the medicine is concerned. What concerns me in cattle about injecting under the skin and the neck is if any lumps uh, are caused by it, uh, this might um, cause difficulty interpreting um, a TB test. Um, so I think behind the shoulder is a, is a perfectly adequate uh, place to inject subcutaneously um, in cattle.